Ahead, more Facebook damage, and nothing old had about this later in the show. Welcome to Three Times Square this Tuesday from Reuters World Headquarters in New York. The video now seems quaint, like it's from a bygone era. The celebration of Facebook's IPO with smiles all around. It's all about the damage at this point. Our daily digit today, $355.7 million. Yes, more than one-third of a billion. That's how much UBS says it lost on the social network's IPO. The market may maker blaming the NASDAQ for its, quote, gross mishandling of the offer. It plans to take action against the exchange. UBS shares down in New York trading. They're down about 5% in Switzerland, where the bank is based. Facebook is roughly flat, trading about a dollar above its new low of 22.28. A different story at Pfizer, cost cuts helping the Dow component post a profit that topped expectations. The drug maker also sticking with its 2012 forecast despite the negative impact of the strong dollar. Aetna's profit fell on higher expenses, but it raised its forecast for the year. While Coach Sales suffered from discounts, it had to offer North American consumers to get them into its stores. Checking the stocks, see Pfizer up over a percent there, Aetna about a percent and a half, and Coach down 17 over 17 percent. Well, our power player of the day. The only company in the world whose schedule regularly makes news and is parsed for hidden meaning and clues about its future. Yes, we are talking about Apple. A source telling Reuters the tech giant has set aside September 12th to unveil a new product. Could it be the long-awaited iPhone 5? The company declined to comment. The source said the date could still change. We've been sucked in like everyone else and we'll give you any updates as we get them. Yahoo's interim CEO Ross Levinson exiting the dot-com today, two weeks after losing the top spot to Google's Marissa Mayer. Levinson leaving with a severance package and stock options that exercise at $15.80 per share, the Friday closing price of Yahoo's stock. They fully vest upon his departure, which means he may be wishing Mayer well. Should the new CEO make the stock price soar, Levinson might still be heard saying, Yahoo. We already talked about the troubles at UBS. They aren't the only European bank hurting. Let's bring in Axel Threlfall in London. Axel, weakness at Deutsche Bank as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, before I get onto that, though, Lisa, I just want to say something on uh, on Apple. I think it's the iPad. We over here in London think it's the iPad Mini that's going to be coming out on September 12th. I did an interview with a guy called Warren East last week, who's the CEO of Arm Holdings, which supplied chips to Apple. And a bunch of people here tell me he let that slip. So, uh, so wait and see. You heard it here first if it does happen. A uh, bunch of news from Deutsche this morning. Uh, as you said, Q2 profit from investment banking uh, for years, a main profit driver down 63%. 1,900 jobs will go uh, and to hit cost savings of 3 billion euros as part of a bigger overhaul. So pretty bleak news, not unexpected given the environment, but bleak nonetheless. The bank didn't say whether it set aside funds for potential costs related to the libel rigging scandal, but we did get a, a bunch of headlines out about it. The bank said it had received a number of subpoenas and requests for information from regulators uh, on LIBOR. An internal probe, by the way, uh, finding that uh, no members of management behaved inappropriately. So that's pretty much the latest on Deutsche, not great. All right, Axel, let's move to BP because they're still dealing with repercussions from the 2010 oil spill. Yeah, um, it's interesting. What's especially, especially noticeable, Lisa, is that the company's pain extends well beyond the Gulf of Mexico. The group also struggled uh, in Russia. It took big write-downs on U.S. shale, uh, on refining, and an abandoned Alaska project. Our, our reporter here in London covering it uh, um, th th well this morning, uh, he said that uh, BP has well and truly cemented its status as the problem child among the world's top oil companies with those numbers. One of the analysts has summed it up pretty well, too, saying the figures were testing the faith uh, of investors. So again, not a great day for BP either, Lisa. Okay, thanks, Al uh, thanks Axel, with a little tip on uh, Apple there as well. Axel Threffel from London. And speaking of London, flipping their lids with Olympic fever. 
Long known for their millinery flair, London designers have donned the town's statues with stylish chapeaus. A total of 20 figures are sporting creative headgear, among them Admiral Lord Nelson and King George IV, both in Trafalgar Square, and former U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt on Bond Street. The hats fashioned by top British designers Philip Tracy, Stephen Jones, and John Boyd, a favorite of the Princess of Wales. Wonder what FDR would think. That's the latest from Three Times Square this Tuesday. You can follow us on Twitter at Reuters Insider and check out our Reuters YouTube channel at Reuters.com slash Reuters TV. I'm Lisa Bernhard. This is Reuters.